Hey, hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm Kristen Ostrander from mommyincome.com along with Amy who is currently in the background. And so we have a couple of announcements for you before we get started and I'm super excited about tonight's show. I, we get these questions a lot. As an FBA seller, I've been selling for over seven years now. Tonight's show is about how to determine if Amazon FBA is the right business for you. And so some of you guys have been doing FBA for a while and you're just not so sure or maybe you've had friends or family ask you about the business and all this kind of stuff. So we want to get into is Amazon the right business for you. There's a lot of businesses out there. There's a lot of ways that you can earn an income online. There's a lot of ways you can earn income offline. There's a lot of opportunities out there. And so I'm here to share with you the Amazon FBA opportunity, the business model that's out there and how we can help you determine if that's right for you. Because you guys know I'm going to shoot you straight. You know I'm not going to sugarcoat this. You know I'm not going to tell you it's all sunshines and rainbows and millions of dollars and we're just throwing dollar bills everywhere because it's the miracle, get rich quick, you know, new thing. Um, you know I'm going to be real. You know I'm going to say everything that you guys need to know about Amazon FBA so that you can decide for yourself if this is right for you or if you're floundering, if you're wondering what am I doing wrong because it's not working very well for me. We're going to hit some of the points. We're here to encourage you as well. This is not a Debbie Downer, everything's all bad. This is just let's be real. So we're going to be real. So who is Amazon FBA? Who is this business model for? Um, the good news is it's for everyone. It can be for anyone, anyone in the world even. It can be for kids. Um, I know kids. Monica Bugsby was on here not too long ago on our show, and her son is doing it. Um, he's got his own Amazon store, and he has put his own money into it, and he's already been making lots of profit. So it can be for kids. It can be for teenagers. My own teenagers have helped me with Amazon. Um, moms, dads, the disabled, veterans, seniors, retirees, full people with full-time jobs even, small town, big cities, and international. So if you're watching this from halfway around the world, good news. Amazon's ready to take over the world. So good news for you that the Amazon FBA is growing and growing. It's in Germany. It's in the UK. It's all over Europe. They've got some in Italy. It's growing. Spain, New Mex or Mexico, of course, here in the United States and Canada. So it's for pretty much anyone in the world. So you're not restricted. You're not limited. It can be for anyone. It's also for anyone with a tax ID number, an internet connection, and ideas of products to sell. So it's not a lot of preparation ahead of time to decide who is this for. It doesn't really exclude anybody, which is great. You do need to have a legitimate tax ID number because in order to open your own Amazon account, you will definitely need um, to be legit. So anyone with a tax ID number and an internet connection can sell on Amazon. And also anyone who's not been previously suspended. If you've had an Amazon account before and you've been suspended, um, Amazon's not for you because um, you've obviously violated some rules and they're really strict about that. And once you get kicked out of Amazon, you're gone forever. And I know that scares a lot of people, but you don't have to run scared of Amazon. They don't go around bullying and picking on people. They get people get suspended for reasons because they broke rules. So um, that's just another something out there. Who can do Amazon? Anyone in the world. Age doesn't matter. Gender doesn't matter. Nationality doesn't matter. Language isn't even a barrier at this point. Amazon is a very, very big company worldwide, and they want to be even more worldwide. So if you're in one of the smaller markets like Canada, Mexico, the UK, there's great news for you. You are on the Midas Touch ground floor level of Amazon. So this is perfect for you if you're listening from somewhere around the world. Why choose Amazon FBA? There's a lot of reasons to choose Amazon FBA as a, as a business model. If you're just starting out or you're thinking about it or you've heard about it from a friend of a friend and you're just not sure and you're confused and you want to know what it's about, why choose Amazon FBA as a business model? Number one, it's a relatively small learning curve. Now, some would argue with that, but here at Mommy Income, we really try to help you with that learning curve because we know it can be intimidating at first and we know it can be hard. So we're always trying to give you information so we can lessen that learning curve for you. But there's a relatively small learning curve compared to other professions, other jobs, other businesses that you have to start and you have to start from the ground up. And 
the other good thing about Amazon FBA is that you can start with very little money and somewhat of a small time investment. So you don't need a ton of money to start up on Amazon FBA. You need some because every business requires some money to start up. You're going to need some inventory to send in. You're going to need a little bit of tools and some supplies at first to get you started, to get you learning, and hopefully a little bit of money for education. You don't want to just jump in and not know what you're doing and, and have to try to figure it out all on your own. There's great resources. A lot of them are free, but there's a lot of great resources, a lot of great people that can help you with those things. So it's also, it's worldwide. Like we said, it's worldwide. You can and send things to um, all over the world. We start, if you're in the United States, you start here. If you're in other places, you can start there and you can import and export. Amazon's making that even easier as we speak. So um, it's worldwide. You can send your products all over the place and you're not even sending them personally. So why is this right for you? Because it's a relatively easy place to start. So that's one of the things. And compared to starting other businesses, this is pretty low risk and low cost startup. So there's not a lot of, there's not a ton of investment that you have to make up front to decide and try it. And that's another thing. It's okay to try Amazon, I would say, for a good six months. I'd say commit, if you're going to start an Amazon business, Amazon FBA, commit to six months of just trying, just doing just doing those things and commit to that at first to say, I really want this to work. I'm going to put time, money, and energy into this, and I'm going to commit to a certain period of time before I decide if it was a success or a failure and reevaluate what I'm doing with it. The great thing about it is that it's low cost, it's low risk, and there's already customers built in. It's not like starting your own website where you're going to start selling, you know, all kinds of different products from your own website and you're going to try to drive traffic and pay-per-click and try to get customers. You've got millions of customers built in ready to buy your products right now on Amazon FBA. You don't have to search for those customers. They're coming to you. So that is one of the greatest things about Amazon FBA is that you can get started right away and things that you send in to the Amazon FBA warehouse can actually sell almost instantly. I've had people sell, send their first box in and sell something within a few days after it's been checked in. And it's very exciting because you see, you get instant gratification almost. When you send something in and something sells within a few days, did you know that there are people that open a brick and mortar store and they don't get customers sometimes when they do a grand opening for a month because no one knows they exist or they're just trying to get customers to come over from a different store and there's competition and people don't know they exist. Could you imagine? So it's one of those things that you've got built-in customers already searching for products ready to buy from you right away. So that's another positive reason to start selling on Amazon because you have built-in custom right away, low risk, low cost, and there's tons and tons of free and paid help and support out there. Of course, I want you guys to come into the Mommy Income Facebook group, which is free, free support and encouragement for those that are Amazon sellers and eBay sellers and just entrepreneurs in general. We want to encourage you to help you grow your business no matter where you're starting. Whether you're already at a million dollar mark or whether you've never even sold a product online, we are here to help you. If you want to join our Facebook group, it's of course, is free and you go to mommyincome.com slash join us and we'd love to have you as part of the group. Those are the reasons why we want to choose Amazon FBA as a business, but we got to be real, okay? This is not a hobby. This is not just like a, I'm going to do this willy-nilly and I'm going to sign up and I might send stuff in or I might just merch and fulfill items. I'm just not so sure. Um, let's be real. This is a business. This is not just fun. And I'll, I mean, it is fun. I'll, I can promise you that I have a lot of fun with my business still, even after seven years, I still get excited about great buys or great bundles that we come up with and put these ideas together. Like, yay! can't wait till this one sells. So it's still fun. It's still an exciting business, something that you, you can get passionate about. You can get excited about finding deals and um, even put, I mean, I do mostly wholesale at this point, but I still get excited about it. I still get excited about even thrifting and going to yard sales and estate sales to find really awesome inventory, but still it's a business. 
and you have to be a legitimate business. So we're going to talk about what kind of time does it take to do an Amazon FBA business? It takes time. It's a business. Every business takes time. If you decided you were going to start a Mary Kay business and you wanted to start selling makeup or you want to start selling those cute little jam berries that they have for your fingernails now, or you're going to do some sort of service and you're going to start working at, um, you know, doing your own business, whether you're doing email marketing, any sort of thing, it's going to take time. It's going to take money. It's going to take energy. And you better be ready to give all three of those, especially if you have a lot of little kids running around and you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, or if you've got a nine-to-five and you're just trying to build up an extra income that maybe can replace your full-time income, which I've seen people do over and over. I've seen people go from zero to a million dollars. I've seen people go from um, you know half a million to two million in six to eight months. These are big stories, but they happen. It's legit. It's a great business model and it works, but you have to commit and you have to put time and energy and money into your business, any business you do. So that goes for not only Amazon FBA, but anything. If you're going to do an MLM type thing, or you're going to do like a It Works or Rodan and Fields or anything that you decide you're going to start is going to take time, money, and energy. So we're not going to give you any BS about that. This isn't a just like set it and forget it and let's sit back and do the four hour work week where we're just chilling on the beach and everything's all happening for us. Eventually that can happen. But at the beginning, you're going to work your tail off. Let's be real. Okay. So what kind of time does Amazon FBA take? It takes, these are the kinds of things that you'll be doing if you're doing Amazon FBA. You're going to be spending time doing research, product research. What am I supposed to sell? How much of it can I sell? What is sales rank? What does that mean for me? How much time can I put in it, into it? Um, product sourcing. You're going to need to source product, whether you're doing online arbitrage, whether you're doing retail arbitrage, thrifting, wholesaling, um, books, only books, book sales, things like that. If you're going to be doing all these things, even if you already have a private label product and you want to bring it to the Amazon marketplace, there's still things that you're going to need to be doing about product research and building listings. Then you have to prep your products and then you have to ship them to Amazon because in order to be FBA, you have to send all your products to Amazon so they're available for your prime customers. So there are all these things you're going to need to spend time on. And that's not it. I know there's more, right? There's more than just selling products and sending them into Amazon. Yes, there's more than that. Because you're a legitimate business, you have to manage your Amazon account, which is returns and damage items and customer damage items and shipment reconciliations and inventory management, negative feedbacks, answering things from Amazon. You know, if they send you a, a policy warning or they have an issue with something, you are responsible for your account. It's not a set it and forget it. You're going, and there are there are processes. Amy and I both have VAs that take care of a lot of this stuff. For those of you who don't know what a VA is, it's a virtual assistant, someone we pay that's actually international. We pay um, them part-time to do a lot of our back-end Amazon work. And you can get there. But if you're new, don't even think about that. You need to know that a virtual assistant will be in your future once you get your account started and you get a handle on what you're doing. But account management is a real thing. And so you're going to need to be accounting. And uh, account management. You're going to need to take care of all these little things. And they add up the bigger you get. When you're smaller, it's easier to do some of these processes. When your business starts to grow and grow and you hit the half a million to a million dollar mark of sales, that's a lot. It's a lot of back end work to have to deal with some of that stuff. And you'll have to deal with your returns. Amazon takes care of the customer service part of your returns, but then the inventory sits there as a customer damage and then you have to deal with it. Stranded inventory, things that get damaged. Those are all your responsibility. So that's a legitimate time suck that you'll have to be thinking about. Also, this is everybody's favorite. Ready? You guys ready? Brace yourself. Ready? Bookkeeping, accounting. This is real. You have to do it. You can't hide under a rug. You can't sweep it under the rug. You can't decide I'll deal with it April 14th of the next year. You have to keep track of your books and your numbers. How will you ever know 
if your business is succeeding, if you don't keep track of what you're spending, the time you're spending, how much your inventory costs, how much your supplies cost, how much your subscription fees cost, what's your inbound shipping, these are things you need to take care of. How much taxes do you need to set aside to pay Uncle Sam at the end of the year? Um, this stuff is not sexy, but it's real. If you're going to open an Amazon FBA business or even a merchant fulfilled business, or dare I even say, yes, you need to pay taxes on your eBay business. If you're running an eBay store or you have sell some stuff on eBay, you're supposed to claim that money on your taxes. And I personally think you should. Some people think, oh, I want to pay as little amount of taxes as possible. Yes, but legitimately I want to file my taxes and know, hey, I ran a successful business. I earned an income. I don't like to pay taxes on that, but I'm proud of the business that I built and I'm happy to fork over the taxes. Okay, I'm not really happy. I will fork over the taxes because it's my duty to do that and all the while being thankful that I have a successful business that I'm able to pay taxes on and not just write it all off. Because someday you might want to buy a house or a car or get some credit or something and you want to prove to say, hey, I've been in business three years and this is my income. Good for me. <laughs> okay, so enough about that. You need to take care of your books and you don't have to do it all by yourself all the time. There's lots of programs. You can hire an accountant for actually a lot less expensive than you think. Check locally. I know accountants and businesses and establishments that will do your bookkeeping for you for between $30 and $50 a month. I know that might seem a lot to someone who's brand new. You don't have to do it today, but you need to do it one way or the other. You need to take care of business. And so bookkeeping and keeping track of your numbers is very important because you want to know that you're making profit. I actually talked to a lady one time that who quit Amazon FBA and that was the reason I wanted to talk to her. I was like, does anybody know anyone that did FBA for a decent amount of time and decided to quit? And so I gave her a call because I was just intrigued. I said, why didn't this work for you or what worked and what didn't and what made you to decide it wasn't right for you? And she said, after a year of sending things in and really trying to tweak and sending this stuff and keeping track of the numbers, she realized she just broke even. And for all that work, it just wasn't worth it. And she had to do a lot of driving because she lived in a small town and just, it just wasn't something she was really excited about. And so although it, it could, ha she saw the potential for it being bigger, it just wasn't for her because of all the time and money demands that just didn't meet her lifestyle. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit later about that. We're going to go through a little bit more about time and money and that kind of investment. And then we're going to talk for real, real about should you or should you not. So we'll, we'll get to that. So those are the, and learning, that's the last one. What kind of time does Amazon FBA ta take? Talked about research, talked about product sourcing, prep, shipping, account management, bookkeeping, and then learning. Because this is an ever-growing business. Even teachers with master's degrees still take classes every year or every couple of years to refresh on the new learning styles, the new textbooks that are coming out, the new internet programs that can help their classrooms. I have a friend who has a master's in teaching and she still has to take personal development and career development classes all the time. We want to keep fresh. We want to keep renewed. We want to keep educating ourselves in our business, in our career, so that we can stay on top of things so that we can stay on top of our competition, so that we can branch out and to grow. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And who wants to stay there? I don't. I certainly want constant change in the right direction. So if I do something wrong, I want to learn what I did wrong so that I don't have to repeat those mistakes over and over. And you will make them. I promise you. You will make mistakes, and that's okay. I've made lots of mistakes. I've had a lot of inventory that I basically had to give away or throw away because it was just a dud. We all make mistakes like that, or there's a race to the bottom, or Amazon comes in. There's all kinds of reasons. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Be more afraid of repeating them and not learning from them. So that's something that you really need to think about. Making sure you have some time for learning and growing and making sure that you know all the policies and all the rules. I can't state that enough. Learn the rules, learn the policies, come to the Facebook group and ask questions. If you're just stuck and you're stuck in the realm of fear of like, I really want to do this, but I don't even know if I prepped my shipment right and uh, I'm breaking out. The sky's not falling. 
you have help, come ask for it. We're here for you. Lots of people are here for you to answer your questions and get you started off of the road of fear and onto the road towards success because it can happen. Okay. That was all the time investment, but there's also money investment. Um, you will need to make a financial investment into your business. <gasps> Can you believe it? You will actually have to spend money in order to start a business? <laughs> Who knew? Yes. Um, we did a show not too long ago. You can find it on YouTube about how to start your Amazon business for $500 or less or Amazon on $500. Amy can post the chat link in the chat if you haven't seen that. We give you the what for and the how to on how you can start an Amazon business for about $500. Um, and that includes some equipment, some um, in mostly inventory money, but um, some equipment that we think is very necessary and gives you a lot of different resources. Some are free, some are paid, some things that we think are necessary for you to really get started if you're serious. So um, you m might want to go and watch that show if this is something that's new for you and you really want to investigate how that works. We did a show on that a couple weeks ago. It is on our YouTube channel. So make sure you go check that out if you want to. How to start an Amazon business with $500 or less. It's possible. Um, I did it a long time ago. I didn't have a dollar hardly, but I scrounged up some money and I sold some stuff that was in my house. And then I went to a book sale and I started sending in books and I did what I had to do. Our back was against the wall. I had no choice. I've been there. I'm not over here sitting on a pile of money saying, sure, you can do this. I understand what it's like to be broke. I understand what it's like to have three kids, a husband that's injured and no job and no income coming in. That was my life. And I decided instead of crying, okay, so I did cry a little. But after that, I decided to suck it up and see what on earth could I do to help my family earn an income while we get this mess figured out. And we knew that God was going to take care of us, but we also knew it was our responsibility to take action. And I had a little Amazon business already, and I said, what can we do to ramp this up? And we did everything we could. And we did it. And we kept doing it and it kept growing and we kept consistently doing things and things ended up turning around and it's not necessarily a rags to riches story, but it's my life and that's really what happened. And I, so I, I hear the naysayers over here going like, yeah, right. You know, you don't know what's, I don't have $500. I don't have $5. Um, you can. There are people that are willing to give you free inventory, and we've done, I think we've done a show on that, about how to get free or low-cost inventory for your business. So there, where there's a will, there's a way. If you're determined to earn an income for yourself or your family, um, there's not any stone that hasn't already been turned over that we can help you with, and I've been there and done that. And so... Um, you know, we've come to the right place if that's where you are, because we can sympathize with that. We understand what it feels like to have your back against the wall, need to earn an income, and want to do it in a legitimate way. And Amazon can definitely serve your needs in that area, but you have to follow the guidelines, and it will cost you some time and some money. Eventually, you're going to need to pony up some money for some education, for some tools and equipment. There's necessary tools and equipment. You need an internet connection. Now, you could go to the library and list products on Amazon through the library if you wanted to. It's possible. But an internet connection, a laptop or a desktop, is, and a cell phone is probably the most necessary things that you need, and a printer. <laughs> you know, basic internet needs. Um, you know, you, you will need to invest um, eventually in some inventory. Some people have closets full of books and books, or maybe you inherited an estate or something, and you have tons of inventory that you need to get rid of, and that might be a place to start. That's awesome. But generally, you're going to need to buy some prep supplies. You're going to need some boxes. You can get them for free. There's lots of places. We have a resource guide that's absolutely free that you can learn about all the tools that you will need for this business. And that's also in the how to start an Amazon business in $500 or less. That's in that show. So just if you need that resource guide or you need that show, go watch that show after this one. Um, because that gives you all the resources about starting and, and different ways that you should spend your 500 bucks if you really have it. Um, but you're going to need some money investment for shipping and prepping supplies for inventory. Um, you're going to sell products online. You have to have products to sell. Uh, you can scan stuff in your house for sure. You can do that sort of thing. And there's very low cost ways to acquire inventory. But let's be real, you want to grow a business, you're going to need to buy inventory and you're going to need to send it to Amazon. So 
you're going to need to invest and it's a great investment and you're going to make some mistakes. So don't beat yourself up about it. Don't expect to double your money in 15 days and all of a sudden you're going to be a, a thousandaire and then a millionaire like overnight. Um, that's can happen for sure. And it's happened lots of times, but the reality is it's a little bit slower growth at first until you really learn what you're doing. You need to understand what sales rank is. You don't need to understand how to use Keepa and Camel and um, all these different resources that are out there for your business and for this business, you need the tools. If you're going to be an internet marketer, you better take a class on internet marketing. You're not just going to wing it. Same thing with Amazon. You're going to need to learn the rules and the tools and the ways that you can make this business really work for you and your lifestyle. So those things are all out there, but you're going to have to make a financial investment. Every, I don't know any business that you can start right now that's absolutely free, that doesn't either take 50 or 60 hours a week to really ramp it up or it doesn't cost you anything. Everything costs something. There's no such thing as a free ride anymore. Uh, especially if you're trying to make money and have a legitimate business, you're going to need to pony up some money. That's just reality. And if you don't have any, it can still be done. It can. It just, you have to do it you know, slow and steady wins the race. It's possible and you can, but it's going to cost you some at some point. Um, so what about, what are your expectations? So we talked about your time investment expectations and let's go back to timing for just a minute. Um, how much time is realistic? It depends on a lot of things. It depends on the kind of investment that you're going to be making right away. So do you have $1,000? Do you have $3,000? Do you have $5,000? Do you have 50? Um, your amount of money that you're going to put into your business, especially into inventory, is going to determine how much time it's going to take you at least up front. Um, I have a well-oiled machine here. I have a business partner who is my mom. I also have one employee that comes once a week that helps with packing and shipping. Um, but I spend about 20 hours a week on my Amazon business and we are in the high six figures. Um, so that's just a, what I'm telling you here, but I'm also not a newbie. I know all the rules. I know the regulations. I know exactly how to pack, exactly how to ship. I have a process for everything and um, a VA that does the back end account management stuff. And I also have bookkeeping. So I do have some bookkeeping that is taken care of. So I don't have to do a lot of these things. It's just one of those things that are, um, that we have in place. So that's going to take you some time to continue doing these things to learn those things. So what's a realistic amount of time for someone who's new and just learning, but is consistent. See, I'm more about consistency, commit, Commit to 10 hours a week. And I hear you already. I'm over here going, I have a 40 hour a week job and I commute an hour each way. That's 50 hours. I know. But what do you really want? If you really want to start a business and you want to earn income on the side and maybe you want to eventually replace your income because Joe Schmo over here told his story and he replaced his income and now is making a million dollars on Amazon and you want to do the same, ask him how much time he put at the beginning. He worked his 50 hour a week grind job and then he came home and he worked until two in the morning on his Amazon business until they flip-flopped to where he was working more on Amazon and less at his job and then quit. That's how it rolls. That's how it works. It doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen by working and dedicating yourself to being committed to your goal and being committed to uh, this business for a time to see if it's worth for you. So making sure that you are realistic about spending your time. So can you do it eight hour a week or 10 hour a week? I don't know. I think that that's a realistic expectation at first to make sure that you're doing, um, that you're putting in an ample amount of time. I would say try to put in 12 hours a week. That's two hours, six days a week that you can put into your business or maybe one full Saturday and one evening each week where you're dedicating to your business. You might not need that much time, but I'd say try to commit to at least that for six months. That's a little bit extra, but I know you, you have more time than you think. Can you do it in that little amount of time? Certainly. Um, might take you more time at first if you're a newbie. That's just reality. So what are your income expectations? This is another thing. Is Amazon right for you? What kind of income expectations 
do you have when you're going into this? I think this is one of the number one things that gets people discouraged when they're talking about their Amazon business. Um, they look at other people's big, huge numbers and they say, oh, look at this, look at that. They're making millions of dollars or they've only been doing this three months and now they're making, you know, a hundred thousand and I, I can't even make, you know, a thousand dollars a week or whatever the case may be. You have to have realistic expectations about number one, your input. You can't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. You're starting. And even if that person just started a month ago and is already way up here, you don't know where they were, what kind of time they put in, what kind of money they put in, what kind of time they've given to their own personal education to grow their businesses. So don't compare yourself. Just decide what's realistic for you. Is it realistic to spend $200 on inventory and expect to make $10,000 next month? Absolutely not. Make sure that you're thinking about that. Make sure your expectations are reasonable. And I can hear your questions now going, what's a reasonable expectation? It just, it really does depend on how much money you're putting in at the beginning. Can you expect to double your money hand over fist every single month? Depends on what products you're buying and how fast they can turn over. So it all depends, depends, depends. You can have a reasonable expectation. Most people that are high volume enjoy between 20 and 30% profit. That is a realistic expectation. Some people enjoy more profit than that. You hear people all the time saying, I make 100% on my money every single time. Your products make, make 100% on your money all the time when you ship them to Amazon. But there's lots of factors that people don't talk about openly. They say, okay, yeah, I double my money every time, but in, Amazon takes fees and there's shipping costs and there's shipping supplies and there's over, there's a little bit of overhead. There just is. Your stuff is not going to turn over every single 30 days, every single time, every product. There's going to be losses. There's going to be times where you send in a product, UPS damages it, and Amazon's only going to give you a quarter of what it's worth because the price dropped. There's lots of different things that can affect your bottom line. And so although you can hear a lot about people saying, I make this and I make that, your average Amazon FBA seller, big or small, is enjoying a 20 to 30 percent uh, profit percentage at the end of the day. So if they're putting in a thousand dollars, then after everything's said and done, they make their money back plus 20 to 30%. So they're sending in $1,000 and they're making between two and $300 in profit after that. That's a pretty decent profit margin, I think. It's a pretty decent income coming back in. And so it's very real, that's about the realistic number. Some people do more, some people do a little less. A lot, I know some people that are willing to enjoy less because they turn the volume. That's just one of the options. That's something that's realistic, that you can expect that back in your pocket. And if you get more, great. Uh, if you get less, great. Try to look about improving um, your costs or maybe the type of inventory that you're buying and the kind of margins you look for. That's to each his own. I know people that are happy with 20% all day long, all the time. I know for ROI purposes, our business, our, our percentage is no less than 75%. Over the years, we've tweaked that number several times because I will not take anything less than 75% because we just need wiggle room for price drops or uh, damages or returns. So we always build in a little wiggle room. Uh, I know more people are willing to do 50% ROI. It just depends on your personal preference. I don't go less than 75% because that's just for me. I know there's great products out there. Most of our wholesale is between 100 and 120% on our wholesale bundles that we do because we can, because we're buying wholesale because it's worth it. And I much prefer over 100% ROI. Who, who doesn't? So I know I can be picky. Uh, I don't have to settle for less than 75% because I know I can get my hands on better. That's just mine. Your business can be different. If you can turn and burn stuff that's worth, you know, just 50% ROI, good. Do it. Do what works for you. Now, we've gone through time. We've gone through money. We've talked about realistic income expectations. Let's talk about your reason and your purpose. And I know this is the this is where the eye rolls come in sometimes because people are like, oh, who cares? We just want to make money in a business. Okay, and that's legit. I get it. Um, but we have to know your why because money isn't enough why. I'm sorry, but it's not. Money, believe it or not, a lot of people think, sure it is. You know, I need to make money, so I'm going to 
pull up my bootstraps every day when I get home and I'm going to work a 10 hour day at my nine to five that I hate. And I'm going to come home and I'm going to run right into my office and I'm going to do this FBA thing. I'm going to do this every day. And nine out of 10 people are not that way. I'm, if you are awesome, I love that. Um, but the reality is money doesn't motivate people for very long because people get lazy. We all get lazy. We all get tired. We all lose sight of that thing and it's not necessarily worth it. Or one thing gets hard and we're like, what's on TV? Cause I don't feel like shipping my product in right now. Like that's real. You guys, it happens to everybody. I have days like that and I love my job. I love my business. I love sitting here and talking to you, but some days some days I'm just tired at Monday night at nine o'clock and I'd rather turn on the TV and just veg, but you know, I just don't, I suck it up. And so not everybody uh, has that. And so it, there are times that it's going to get hard. There are times where you're not going to feel like it. There are times where being your own boss is not sexy. It's annoying and frustrating and things go wrong and you have to fix it all. It's all on you. So having a reason or a purpose is very important. What's the bigger thing that you want? Because people say money all the time, but it's like, I just want more money. Be why? Because what do you think money is going to buy you? It, it's going to buy you freedom. And that's what people really want. They want to wake up every day and feel free. They don't want to feel chained to a job that they hate. They don't want to feel chained to oh, I have to drive this kind of car all the time because my income level doesn't afford me anything else. And that doesn't feel like freedom. That feels like being stuck. You know, nobody wants to feel like that. And so those are the kinds of things that motivate people more than just money. Because I can promise you one thing, more money isn't going to make you any happier. Sure, it can help. It can give you some of the finer things in life. It can give you, buys you, what it really buys you is more choices. Because we all are going to have a car. It's just, are you going to have this kind of car or that kind of car? But at the end of the day, the car is not going to matter. After the new wears off, you're going to drive your car from point A to point B and you'll have heat and air and a really, really great sound system and GPS and whatever else. But at the end of the day, that's not going to fulfill you. That's not going to be the reason and your purpose for what you want to do. So you have to think a little bit more than just, I need money and I need money ASAP. Think about more of a fulfillment of, I'm a business owner and I like the processes of doing something just for me, the freedom to work from midnight till 4 a.m. if I want and not have to work your nine to five schedule and punch in and punch out because somebody told me to. So all the money in the world cannot buy that. It can that's what the job can help you do to think about that. So think about a little bit deeper about what it is you really want and go after that thing. It's not just about, I need to, to pay for money. So even if it, you need money for a specific purpose, focus on that. Recently, someone said that they were starting an M Amazon FBA business because they want to put their child through school. That is a great gift and a great motivation to keep moving because you don't want your kids to be in debt up to their eyeballs when they when they spend four years at a college and they earn a degree and all of a sudden they they spend so much money, you know, on student loans. Anybody here have student loans that are still haunting them? Um, you know, that's a great gift that I know this one um, lady wants to give her children is to pay for their college so that they don't have to sweat over it. So that's a great motivation. That's more of a reason to get up in the morning and run your own business than it is to just be like, I want to buy a new car or, you know, it's just thinking about that. Thinking about the money aspect of it is, that is kind of the beginning part. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you want something more than just the money. Maybe you just want fulfillment. Maybe you're just retired and bored and you want something that's all your own. This is perfect for you then, because then it's not going to be about how much money I can make. It's going to be more like, how can I be a successful business owner? That is better of a goal than how much money can I reach for? Because at the end of the day, even 
you know, I'm a Christian, I am, uh, I have faith, and I, you know, that's just going to be part of who I am, so um, you're just going to have to deal with that, but even King Solomon had everything in the world, so in Ecclesiastes, you're, you listen to Solomon, and he's like, I have everything, I've had everything, he had all the money, all the wisdom, all the everything in the whole world, and he said, it was all useless and wasted, if you don't have a bigger, better purpose, because you can have all the things in life. You can have all the stuff that you ever want, and it's not going to fill your heart. So you have to decide what kind of purpose it is. And if you're earning money for a specific purpose that's better, then that's something that you really need to think about. Your purpose can just be you want something that's all your own. You want your own success because you have worked hard and you want your pat on the back, you know, whatever your purpose is, think about that. A lot of people just don't. They're just like, I want to start a business. I want to make money. I want to be successful. I want to do this. Show me what to do. And they don't think about all this other stuff. I know it's not the fun stuff. It's more fun to hear about people making millions of dollars and they're killing it and they're sitting on the beach and, you know, Aruba somewhere with their feet up and, you know, drinking a margarita and life is all grand. Yeah, that's fun too, for sure. But let's be real. Everybody has places, things, and reasons, what they, the reasons why they really want things. Maybe it's a dead end job and you just hate. So really think about your reason. Maybe it's just you like shopping and you want to make sure that was my mom. My mom liked shopping and realized she could make a living shopping. That was like a big thing. And she hated her job at the time too. And now she's retired from that because she works full time with Amazon. It's an amazing, um, but she hated her job, but she also loved to shop. She's like, I can shop for a living and make money. That's awesome. So that was like her reason. And then she quit her job and now she has way more freedom. She's not chained to working from four to 10 for the last 20 years that she was working because someone said she had to show up. Um, so it's really, these are realistic stories. These are our lives. My mom's a full-time business partner. We work together and she's amazing. And she was able to quit her job and go shopping for a living. And now she's making bundles and creating things and she loves it. So there's all kinds of reasons. Make sure you find yours, whether it's a sense of accomplishment or even it's just extra cash because you hate the rat race or you got to make ends meet. I get that. I did. I was there. I had to make ends meet and it was something I got to do that I loved, but I also had to. So that was part of my motivation. I have three little mouths to feed and a husband who needs to get well and have some time to heal without worrying about the bills. And so that was part of my reason. Now it's just I still love it. I still love doing what I do. So I had to have that why and you have to think about it. And last but not least, we're going to talk about just because you can or you're able or you're willing doesn't mean you should. And this is the hardest part. The guys, this is the hardest part. You have to think about just because you can or you're able to have some money to invest and all that kind of stuff doesn't mean you should doesn't mean that Amazon FBA is the right business for you. You have to think about all of these things. First of all, do you even like it? Do you like to look for products and sell them on Amazon? Do you like to figure out what it is you're going to sell? Do you like shopping? That's part of the process of doing. Now, I know there's people that don't do any retail arbitrage or thrifting or even online arbitrage, that they only do wholesale private label, but you still have to do product research, see what's out there that sells, see what's out there that's going to be making money. You're going to have to do these things. So you're going to have to like it at some point. Otherwise, why? It's just another job. It's just another thing that you have to do that puts money in your pocket. Well, guess what? We all have to wake up and put money in our pocket. So you might as well do something you enjoy. So if it's not something that you're really going to enjoy, then move on. Just because something other people are making money at doesn't mean it's for you. You have to figure out, am I going to like all this stuff? Reality is you're going to eventually be handling box cutters, box tape, you're going to be shipping, you're going to be labeling, even if it's only for a short time until you can get an employee or something like that. This is a real part of the business. Box tape, utility knives, packing stuff, packing slips, printing stuff on a dymo or, you know, packaging and prepping. And this is part of the business. You're going to have to do some of that over time. So you have to think about, is that something that you're going to enjoy? Does the good outweigh the bad? Is this something that I like doing? Analyze the time it will take you to learn, practice, and perfect this business model. 
And there's all kinds of different ways you can do this business model. You don't have to do retail and thrifting. You don't have to do wholesale. I know people that do like 80% grocery. They're all retail arbitrage. They run around like chickens with their heads cut off, getting all these grocery deals. They just hit a million dollars. It's possible. You can do it with low cost items, with lots of volume and lots of help. It's possible, but that might not be right for you. Maybe you only have 10 hours a week and you cannot run around from store to store to store with four kids in tow and try to figure it all out. There's good news for you. There's wholesale catalogs. You can sit with your coffee in your Starbucks, in your jammies, with your laptop, in your bed at 2 a.m. and you can make an Amazon business work for you. But eventually you're gonna have to ship and pack and do all that or you're gonna to have to pay for a prep center to do it. That's a possibility too. There's all kinds of different angles to work this business, but you're gonna to have to like it and you're, you're an entrepreneur. You're in charge, CEO, head honcho, owner, customer service rep, bookkeeper, you're it. So you better be ready to be it. If you're not, keep your day job, whatever, because I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's, gonna, it's not easy at first. It gets easier when you learn processes and you put them in place and you get help and you get accountable and you um, do the hard stuff in the beginning. Are you willing to risk your time and your money and learn the necessary rules and processes to become successful? Ask yourself these questions. Write them down. Think about it. Am I ready to will and willing to risk my time and money to learn the necessary things and rules and processes to become successful at this business or any business. Maybe do MLM stuff. Ask yourself the same question with that. If you can't say, yes, I'm ready to, to risk my time and my money to learn things in order to grow my business, then you're in the wrong business. If you're not ready to say yes, then think about other options. There's lots of options. I'm just giving you this option. Are you self-motivated enough? Now, there's a lot of people that are self-motivated to a point. Are you self-motivated enough on the days when you don't feel like it? Who's going to be pushing you? It's got to be you. It's got to be something that you want more than you want to, to be satisfied in your own self. Like, I definitely have days I don't feel like it. I have definitely have days where I don't want to see another cardboard box in my life. My wholesale come, orders come in droves and they're in boxes, inside boxes. And I'm just like, oh, I hate cardboard. I'm so ugly. It's everywhere. <laughs> Brown. I hate cardboard. It's, it's taking over my life, but it's part of my business. And so I suck it up and I go, okay, cut up the cardboard, get it out to the recycling, get over it. It's going away in a minute. You know, there are times where you're going to have to tell yourself to man up and like get it done because no one else is going to stand over you. There's no boss saying punch in, punch out. Hey, you're wasting your time on Facebook. Hey, you're, you know, off in never, never land. It's only you. You're there. You got to do it. Are you ready to self-motivate yourself even on days you don't feel like it? When you're a business owner, you can't trust your feelings. You have to do what's right, even if you don't feel like it, because no one else is going to be there to pick up the pieces if you decide to sleep in. Are you willing and able to learn and care for every aspect of your business, at least for a time? You can eventually hire that out, and we encourage that. We encourage you to hire people and help eventually. But are you willing and able to learn and care for all those aspects of your business right now? You're, just like we talked about, you're it right now. You're everything. You're everywhere from the doorman to the transporter to the shipper to the processor to the box taper to the customer service, everything. You're it right now. Are you willing to be it for your business? Are you willing to be legit and pay your taxes and be honest and upfront and file taxes and do the necessary legal paperwork that you need to make sure that you're a business entity? Opening your own business account and separating it from your personal checking. Not using personal credit cards with business credit cards and buying inventory with your MasterCard that you've had for 20 years. No, open a new one in your new business name if that's what you choose to do. I'm not saying use credit or don't use credit. That's a debate for a different day. But what I'm saying is if you're gonna be legit, let it be, you know, booksareus.com or whatever you are, whatever your business name is, don't use your personal business and finance business together. That's not acceptable. Are you ready to be legit and be an upfront business and do the necessary paperwork and legal work and um, tax documentation to be legit? That's something you think about and do proper bookkeeping. I'm not going to say that more than 10 times. Do proper bookkeeping. Know if you're making a profit. 
why spend your time doing all this if you don't know your numbers and you don't know whether you can get excited about making money or not? And do you have plans and goals? If you decide to commit to Amazon FBA or any other business, have a plan and a goal. Big goals, little goals. And what's the plan to get there? This is These are big steps. You're opening a business. It's not willy-nilly. It's not just, eh, I'll think about it. I'll do this. I'll do that. At least jot it down on some scratch paper somewhere that you've actually kind of sort of made a direction. Um, I'm more about those bullet points and saying, hey, I want to make X amount of dollars by this amount of time. I want to have this much inventory by over first and all that jazz. But if that's not your style, do something. Write it down and say, eventually I want this goal. This is my goal of this business. I want to be, you know, the most successful woman entrepreneur in Des Moines. I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter what your goal is. It's going to be different than mine. It's going to be different than somebody else's. But write it down and think about it because that's what's going to motivate you on days when you don't feel like it. So have a goal and then a plan. How are you going to get there? Um, and are you willing to put in the extra hours to make it work? Because this isn't sexy, but it's real. At the beginning, it's harder. It's longer. It takes a lot of time. A lot of people that open businesses close within two years. Actually, it's usually within one year. I just saw a flower shop at the corner of my street up here. Opened for less than a year and closed. Already done. Shut down. Didn't work for whatever reason. Happens all the time to people. I don't know if it's they didn't get traffic, they didn't do the right marketing. I, I have no idea why their business closed. Maybe they just were like, this wasn't for me after all this time. That, all the reasons are okay. But don't let it be because you weren't active, you didn't have a plan, you didn't try every single thing you can, reached out for help, and then you failed. So what? Then maybe it's not for you. But don't let it go by if it's something that you really want without getting help and getting the right plan in place. And I can help you with that if you get stuck there. Finally, are your... Do you have realistic expectations about a business? Real expectations are that you're going to spend extra time, you're going to spend extra money, you're going to have failures and successes, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to break a few rules if you don't read them all, if you don't ask for help, you're going to be stuck in the dark. If you look for too much information too fast, that's going to clog your mind as well. So baby steps, take action every day. So these are just all the things not, is, is Amazon really right for you? Um, analyze it. Think about it. Write it down. Answer yes to the questions and you're ready to rock and roll. Awesome. We're here to help you and we want to help you. And not just this business. If you're saying, hey, I'm not ready for FBA. What else you got? We've got some other ideas too. And we've got some things working for you because some people are great with FBA. And now they want to move on to something else. And we're happy to help with that as well. Help you to grow your business no matter what direction you're going in. And so we're here to help you with that. If you're interested in Amazon FBA and you've never tried it and you're interested in learning more about it, Amy and I have a book, Amazon FBA Launchpad. So to find the book, to start on Amazon, that means everything you need to start your Amazon FBA business. So if you know a friend, a family member, maybe it's you and you're interested in starting your Amazon business, you've answered yes to all these things, you've got your why, you've got your, you're ready to go, go to azfbalaunchpad.com and buy the book. It's all you need to get started on Amazon right now today. You could send your first box in within seven days after reading the book. It's very easy to follow. It's digital. You can also have a hard copy if you want. You'll have to contact us with that. It gives you all the information and in days you could have your first box off to Amazon and actually get this thing started. That's how quick and easy it can really be once you go take the time to realize that this is the kind of commitment that you want to make. Um, we're also making Amazon Launchpad into a video course. So it's in process, not quite done yet, but if you want the book now, you will be able to get 50% off the course when it comes out and it's coming out soon. So we've got some more work to do on it to make sure it's the very best. It's been a high demand to make an Amazon uh, beginners video course and we are on it. So we are happy to share that with you and it's coming out soon. But if you just can't wait and you need to have the book right now, go to azfbalaunchpad.com and get the Amazon Launchpad book. It's everything you need to get started. Walks you through setting up your account all the way to sending in your first cardboard box of inventory to Amazon. So it's what you need to get started if that's something that you haven't done yet or you have a friend or family or something that it's like, hey, I want to do what you do and you don't know how to teach them. This book is great for them and the course will be even better. Of course, the Facebook group, if you're not part of our Facebook group, um, you can only 
become invited and you are officially invited but you need a code word because we don't just let any old somebody in our Facebook group we protect our people and so if you want to begin your code word is FBA biz hashtag FBA biz and we'd love to have you so go to mommyincome.com slash join us and type in FBA biz as your code word and we'd love to have you as part of our free community we're here to help you and we really want you in our group and thank you for hanging out with us this whole time I'm Kristen Ostrander Thanks for joining me tonight, and we'll see you again next week on Mommy Income Live. Have a good one.